Shalom, brother. Shalom. Shalom. You a believer? Uh, hold up. Before you answer that question, let's find out what a believer is. Hey, everybody. Today we're going to go through actually being a believer. Because many people say, I'm a believer. I believe in Messiah. I believe in Messiah. I believe in Yahshua. But do you really believe? Now, this is what we're going to go through today. And you're going to be amazed at how one might not truly be a believer. Now, first we're going to go into Hebrews 10 and 26. Hebrews 10 and 26. For if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sin. Now, sin willfully, that means presumptuous sin. After you receive the knowledge of the truth, there's no more sacrifice for sin. Now, the issue is, we have to find out what the knowledge of the truth is. Because after you receive whatever this knowledge of the truth is, you can't have any more sacrifice for sins. So, in going in that, let's find out what Yahche was actually coming to do. What, what was Yahweh's purpose besides coming to put away the sins of the people? There was something that Yahweh, very, very specific, what Yahweh was coming to do and what was going to happen through him dying. It, can you go to Luke 3 and 16? Luke 3, 16. John answered, saying unto them all, I indeed baptize you with water. Mm -hmm. But one mightier than I cometh, the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to unloose. He shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Now, this is a very interesting thing. Yachanan said that he baptized us with water. But he said one mightier than him was going to come, who was going to baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Now this fire is very interesting. Because nobody really goes into the fire that we're supposed to be baptized in. Now, what does fire do? It consumes. It consumes. There's one, and fire also purges. Oh, so if there are any impurities, then? Fire burns it away, takes it away. Mm -hmm. Now, going to Hebrews 9 and 14. And let's figure out what this fire of the baptism, because this fire comes either before or after you're baptized with water. And this particular fire is going to purge something from you. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 14. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself, Without spot to Allah Hayyim, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living Allah Hayyim. Now, we're getting a little bit further into this knowledge of truth that was spoken of in Hebrews 10 and 26. Now, first off, Messiah, through his blood, he took away all your past sins. And through the fire of the baptism, it purges your conscience from dead work. Now you're coming into the knowledge of the truth. Because without that fire and without that blood and you believe in that blood that purged your conscience and that moved you away from the dead work that took all the iniquity that changed you through the commandment and through the fruit of the spirit which is the knowledge of the truth. Once you learn of these things, and once you learn all that it takes to enter into the kingdom, and all the truth, all the truth, not just a bit of the truth, not just you have to keep the commandments, not just you have to believe in Yahweh, but also knowing that you have to bring forth fruit. And once you learn these things, you have to do it. Or else it leaves you to the point where you're sinning presumptuously. 
Because everything has been given unto you. Everything that you need for eternal salvation has been set before you. And one is only choosing to turn away or to go towards the goal. This is why there's no more sacrifice for sin after you come into the knowledge of the truth. That's why this gospel is so surreal. Because once you learn of these things, and once it comes into your conscience, because Yahshua came and he died for your past sins, but moving forward, after you come into the knowledge of the truth, which is doing these things, which we're going to find out, you actually have to do these things. You have to believe in Yahshua. You have to believe and keep his commandments. And you have to bear the fruits of the Spirit. Now, I don't want to go too far into it. Can we jump into Genesis 15 and 6? So we're going to figure out what the Hebrew word is for believe. Genesis 15 and 6. And he believed in Ahaya, and he counted it to him for righteousness. Now, what is the word for believe, the, the Hebrew concordance in this definition? The strongest concordance, definition H539. Properly to build up or support. Figuratively to render or be firm or faithful. To trust or believe. To be firm. Firm in what? To be faithful. To be faithful in what? To trust and believe. Go ahead. To be permanent. To be permanent. That means that you're not going anywhere. It's permanently there. It's not moving. It's not going to disappear. Right. Or quiet. Morally to be true. Or certain. You know for certain or for a fact this is true. And that this is going to save you. There's no doubt in your mind. Right. To go to the right hand. To go to the right hand, which is Yache, we're going to touch on that. Hence, assurance. Assurance. Believe, bring up, establish, fail, be faithful, of long continuance, steadfast. Steadfast. That's another one I was looking for. We're going to touch on this one as well. So we know that it says to go to the right hand. Now we know that this right hand is Yahweh. That's true because in Isaiah 53 he says, Who is the arm of the Lord revealed? And he was referring to Yahweh. So he is the right hand. But being at the right hand of the Father. He does everything for the Father because the right hand is your dominant hand. Right. The right hand is a token of power or strength in the scriptural context. The right hand is the dominant hand. And this is the hand that does all the work. Now... We're going to touch on steadfast, and there was something very key that Paul understood about being steadfast. And we don't understand this, but Paul was actually telling us what it takes to be a believer and how to show that you believe. And can you go to 1 Corinthians 15 and 58, please? 1 Corinthians 15 and 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of Ahaya, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in Ahaya. He said, be ye steadfast, unmovable, unmovable in the faith, unmovable in the commandment, unmovable in believing in Yahweh. In the blood that was shed for you. What's the definition for steadfast in the uh, Greek? It's G1476. It means to sit sedentary. That is, by implication, immovable, settled, steadfast. And it also means firm, sitting, as in sitting in one place, not moving from where one not is. Not moving at all. At all. <laughs> so, when somebody comes telling you to break the commandment or coming telling you to veer away from the path, you don't move a muscle. 
You're firm. You're concrete in the faith. Nothing faces you. This is what becoming a believer or being a believer is. You're going to keep those commandments no matter what. You're going to bear the fruit of the Spirit no matter what. You're going to believe in Yahweh no matter what. This is being a believer. Walking in truth, walking in integrity, walking in all the fruits of the Spirit. Walking in peace. Long suffering. Meekness. This is how we show that we're a believer. And of course, Paul is going to go into more about it because these are very, very key, essential things to one being a believer. You actually have to be a believer to say you're a believer. And there's certain things that you must show forth. Can you go to Colossians 2 and 5, please? Colossians 2 and 5. For though I be absent in the flesh, yet am I with you in the spirit, joying and beholding your order and the steadfastness of your faith in Mishiach. He said he's beholding your order, being steadfast in the faith, steadfast in keeping the commandments, steadfast in bearing the fruit. Because steadfastness means believing. Paul was actually telling how to be a believer by being steadfast in the faith, steadfast with dignity, operating in all morale, and being concrete and strong and unmovable. Unmovable for the commandments. You have to believe in something. The faith is to believe that you have to keep the commandments. So this is what our Father tells us to do. And also our Doni and Yahshua tells us to keep the commandments. You have to bear the fruits of the Spirit because that's the only way you can go through the gate. You have to believe in the blood that was shed for you that purged your conscience from dead works. This is where we're going into the knowledge of the truth. Where when you get to this point, there's no more sacrifice for sins because you are truly a believer. You can't go backwards. You can't turn back. And just to verify on that, we're going to come back to Paul telling us about being a believer, but we can touch on Ezekiel 33. Ezekiel chapter 33. Uh, probably can start at what? Verse 11. Verse 11. Say unto them, as I live, saith Adonai Ahaya, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn ye, turn ye from your evil ways, for why will you die, O house of Israel? So Ahaya has no pleasure in the wicked to die. He wants them to turn from their sin and turn unto righteousness. Therefore, thou son of man, say unto the children of thy people, The righteousness of the righteous shall not deliver him in the day of his transgression. This is exactly what we're talking about in Hebrews chapter 10 verse 26. He says, if you sin willfully, after receiving the knowledge of the truth, there's no more sacrifice for sin. And as you see right here in Ezekiel 33, where you're at verse 12. Yes, verse 12. Verse 12, he says, For the righteousness of the righteous shall not deliver him the day of his transgression. Because for a righteous man or a believer to go back and to transgress, there's no coming out of it. Because he knew too much. He knew too much, and he, he knew, he was firm, he, he should have been immovable, and he was immovable. This is the problem, is he was immovable, and he did it knowing what was going to happen to him. And this is what the most I said when he talks about how all have gone into sin. He had said, uh, he had concluded them all in unbelief that okay. he might have mercy upon all. Oh, That's right. In Romans 11 and uh, 32. Right. Unbelief, even better. You're right. So that's because <laughs> it ties right in. It's the unbelief. unbelief. <laughs> he knew we were going to become a generation of unbelievers. 
that we were going to profess with our mouth that we believe, but our heart was going to be far away from him. But that must change. Continue. All right. Ezekiel chapter 33, verse 12. Therefore, thou son of man, say unto the children of thy people, the righteousness of the righteous shall not deliver him in the day of his transgression. As for the wickedness of the wicked, he shall not fall thereby in the day that he turneth from his wickedness. Neither shall the righteous be able to live for his righteousness in the day that he sinneth. When I shall say to the righteous that he shall surely live, if he trust to his own righteousness and commit iniquity, all his righteousness shall not be remembered. But for his iniquity that he hath committed, he shall die for it. Again, when I say to the wicked, thou shalt surely die. If he turn from his sin and do that which is lawful and right, if the wicked restore the pledge, give again he, that he had robbed, walk in the statues of life without committing iniquity, he shall surely live, he shall not die. Hmm. So if the wicked turns from iniquity and does that which is right and bring forth fruit worthy of repentance, he shall live. We have to turn from our iniquity and bring forth fruit worthy of repentance and sin no more and keep the commandments, bear the fruits of the Spirit and believe in the blood that purged our conscience and that came to atone for us so that we can live and we can become believers. While confessing our faults along the way as we go through the growth process. So the Abraham will be merciful unto us and this is what we need to do. For the sake of our soul. Now, talking about saying you're a believer, but yet you're still walking in sin. You're not bringing forth fruit worthy of repentance, and you're not bearing the fruits of the Spirit. By definition of the Bible and by precepts, as we continue to go, you're getting the point that if our works don't align with what we confess with our mouths, we won't be believers. So today, we're coming forth that we do become believers and that we do no more iniquity and no more sin so that we can be right in the eyes of Ahayah and that he may see us turning and turning from our sin and turning from our transgression that he may look upon us and that we may be true believers in the earth. You got some more there? Uh, yes, I do. The none of his sins that he hath committed shall be mentioned unto him. So he, that's the purging. This is exactly what Yate came for. Mm -hmm. That fire, that baptism with fire, purging the conscience from past sins and dead works. Right. He came. He purged it. Right. Because they said that he, he restored the pledge to give that which he had robbed, right. walk in the statutes of life without committing iniquity. Right. He's bringing forth fruit where they were Showing that he's changed. Right. He shall not die, he shall surely live. He goes on to say, He hath done that which is lawful and right. Mm. He shall surely live. Yet the children of thy people say, The way of a done is not equal. But as for them, their way is not equal. When the righteous turneth from his righteousness and committeth iniquity, he shall even die thereby. So here we go, another scenario of Hebrews 10 and 26. If you sin willfully after you receive the knowledge of the truth, being a true believer, there's no more sacrifice for sin. He said, he shall surely die. Because you're going to sin because you knew too much. And you, and you believed and you knew what you were in. You knew everything that you were taking part of. And you believed in it. And you were unmovable in it. But then you got moved. This is why, as far as being a believer, this is for those that are truly believers. You cannot turn backwards. Right, because there go and be stumbles, but a just man falleth seven times and get it back up. You have to continue enduring until the end. Do not turn backwards. Do not go back into the world. Because your life depends on it. And for those that do not believe, turn from your iniquity. 
Turn from your double mindedness and believe in Messiah. Believe that he's purging your old sins and, and baptizing you with fire so that you may receive the Holy Spirit and that you may live and that Allah may be gracious unto you. We're going to jump over to Hebrews 3 and 14 and get back to Paul. Hebrews chapter 3 verse 14. For we are made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. Hold on. He said, if we hold the beginning of our confidence. Now to be confident in something, you have to believe in it. Because no man having confidence doesn't believe in what they have confidence in. We have to have confidence in this and be steadfast, immovable, firm in the faith, firm in the belief, firm in the commandment. I'm going to keep stressing this so that you can understand the importance of it. Firm in the fruits of the Spirit. Go ahead. While it is said, today, if you will hear his voice, Harden not your hearts as in the provocation. For some, when they had heard, did provoke. Howbeit not all that came out of Egypt by Mushi. But with whom was he grieved forty years? Was it not with them that had sinned, whose carcasses fell in the wilderness? And to whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest, but to them that believe not? So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. Our forefathers didn't believe in the wilderness. And unfortunately, we're in the generation of unbelievers as well. Because we're not doing the things that show that we're a believer. So we're back in the same predicament as our forefathers. And we've seen what happened. Everybody knows the story of what happened in them 40 years in the wilderness. And how... Allah cut them all off, except a few. Because we didn't believe. This is why we, majority, many of our people are still sinning. They don't believe that you have to keep the commandment. They don't bring forth any fruit for the Spirit. But then they say, and they believe, which is far from the truth. What constituted not believing for our forefathers in the wilderness? Their heart was far away. Their heart was far away. And what you had said was in the Psalms. Mm -hmm. It was uh, Psalms 95 verse 10. He said, Forty years long was I grieved with this generation and said, It is a people that do err in their heart and have not known my ways. Mm -hmm. That ties right back to the knowledge of the truth. But they never knew the knowledge of the truth. But they were unbelievers. And it, it goes right back into it. Once you understand that you have to have the testimony of Yahshua. You have to believe in him and what he done for you. And the baptism of fire. And you have to believe in keeping the commandments. And you have to believe in bearing the fruits of the Spirit. Our forefathers in the wilderness never understood this. Therefore they were constituted as unbelievers. It should be getting pretty simple and pretty repetitive and quite frank to, to those that are listening. The knowledge of Allah is very simple and it's very straightforward. It's not some complex thing. You just have to do it. Right. Trusting in the grace of Allah Hayyam that he'll strengthen us as we work through our struggles to overcome ourselves. Second Peter 3 and 17 and 18. Second Peter three seventeen. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware lest ye also being led away with the error of the wicked fall from your own steadfastness. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Adonai and Savior, Yahche Mashiach. To whom be glory both now and forever. Amen. 
in verse 17 says, Ye therefore, beloved, seeing you know these things before. He's talking to believers and he's saying, you know these things. You know what you have to do. Beware. Beware. At least ye also be led away with the error of the wicked. Because if you fall away, there's no more sacrifice to sin. Paul knew these things. He was trying to warn us to be steadfast, to be unmovable. Because he knew what would happen to us if we came into this and we became believers and we fell away. This is why Allah is so merciful. Because the majority of us are unbelievers. But we know not what we do. So he doesn't allow us to perish. Not all of us. Some of us are, are go off into a deep end and we get judgment. But a lot of us, he allows us to linger in this world so that we may turn from it. Because we were in unbelief a whole life. So he's merciful to not give out this information where everyone is accountable for it. Because then everybody will have to die because you believed and you knew the knowledge of the truth and you chose to do something else. He's very merciful. He's very, very merciful to leave us to be ignorant so that we do not die and that when the knowledge did come that we will have a true chance to receive it and to turn from our iniquity and to walk in the right way. He did not leave us destitute. We're going to go into uh, the example of a believer. 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 12. 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 12. Let no man despise thy youth. But be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Now, it's interesting. What Paul uh, is writing right here, it's the fruits of the Spirit. He said, be ye an example of a believer in word, in conversation. So, your chastity, your righteous conversation. In charity, which is the fruit of the Spirit. Because if you have not charity, yeah, not with anything. <laughs> <laughs> Paul said it. Though I speak the language of angels, if I have not charity, man, like a whistling wind is charity, the bond of perfectness. Yes, it is in the book of our Colossians. In spirit, in faith, faith is one of the fruits of the spirit. In purity, purity is the fruit of the spirit. Mm -hmm. And the word conversation was uh, G391, it meant behavior. Oh, wow. So it actually is talking about all the fruits of the it spirit. Of the spirit. <laughs> because yeah. all the fruits of the spirit pertain to our behavior. That's right. It's amazing. It's interesting. He was sitting here trying to tell us how to be a believer. It was more than just keeping the commandments. It was more than just believing. Right, because Baruch talked about how sowing the law in our hearts bring forth fruit in us. It was all three of them together. You have to believe in the blood that purged your conscience and you purged your past sins. And that atones for you so that you may come back unto the Father. You have to also believe in the commandments. Because Paul said, how shall I know righteousness unless it had been for the law? For the law did not say, thou shalt not covet. Yeah, by the law. It's amazing what you, what's being brought forth because that's what he said now, three that bear record in the earth. Right? The water, blood, and the spirit. Yeah. And you're talking about the three that we must have to be actually believers, right? right. We know the water, the water baptism. Right. And the water is also the washing of the word. Because right. it's the living water. Yeah. And the blood, that's the sun that we have to believe in. Right. And the spirit, 
that's the fruits that we have to bear. <laughs> so it's, and all these three agree in one. Yes, they do. So it shows what we must have. You have to have the Alahayim in you. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> to be a believer. And all men. You have to have the Alahayim in you. It's amazing. The only way you can be a believer. It's amazing. Because Rome, Revelation 3 and 14, Yahshua said that he is the Omen. He said, right unto the church of the Lord of Seers. The, this said, the Omen, the true and faithful witness, the beginning of the creation of Allah. So it's interesting that the three that we have to have cause us to actually be believers. Right. And by actually being believers, we'll actually be Omen. We'll be, he would act, it ties back in us. Imen or Allah. Amazing. That's amazing. Pray that we all become believers. And that we don't turn from it, but we endure. That's how our beloved brother Paul said. Endure and hold fast to the faith. And be unmovable in righteousness. Unmovable in the commandments. Unmovable in the faith. Of Yachi, in the belief, in the testimony, and unmovable in the fruits of the Spirit. This is how we be an example of a believer. May Allah be with you. He may keep you. He may his face shine upon you. Till next time. Shalom. Shalom.